And the president there uh, leaving Morristown, New Jersey, uh, for a campaign event, a rally in uh, New Hampshire later this evening, taking a lot of questions, uh, many of which bear on trade, uh, on the situation in Hong Kong. And for a wrap-up, let's go to Kayla Tausche in Washington. Lots of news on trade. None of it, I think, Kayla, anything that he had not in one way or another said before. Well, that last bit, Tyler, that he uh, saved for last uh, is perhaps the newsiest bit of that entire uh, event right there. He said he has a call scheduled with President Xi of China and that they will speak soon. There was an expectation that perhaps some of the free traders within the White House had been pushing President Trump to speak with President Xi before this September 1st tariff deadline to at least try to work out another truce or figure out uh, if they could keep this situation from escalating. There had been a question over whether that would in fact happen, whether President Trump was even on board with that idea. But right there, he just confirmed that he plans to speak with China's president uh, very soon. He addressed the situation in Hong Kong. He said again that he hopes China solves that in a humane way. But on the trade front, he gave a lot of headlines there. He said that he hopes China follows through on its agricultural purchases uh, very quickly. He said they're having productive talks. And he says uh, that the U.S. is offering them some things that are very good. He didn't elaborate on exactly what those very good things are, Tyler, but we know there's a deadline on Monday for the U.S. to perhaps extend some licenses for Huawei to continue doing businesses with U.S. companies. We'll wait and see if that's exactly what he's mentioning there. And he certainly comes back to the, to the idea that China is bearing the brunt of the trade fight. Uh, that He also mentioned at one point, I think, Kayla, that there may come a time where U.S. consumers will have to shoulder some of the burden, which is a departure from, from some of his previous rhetoric, if I'm not mistaken. It is a departure. It's something that several White House officials have been forced to acknowledge in recent days with the decision to shelve a little bit more than half of those tariffs that the president uh, announced in a surprise way earlier this month, acknowledging that they didn't want to uh, ruin Christmas, they didn't want to impact holiday spending, but even the president there saying that he doesn't want consumers to have to pay at all. All right, Kayla Tausche in Washington for us. Thank you very much. Folks, let's kick it around the table here. As Karen pointed out, uh, the president spoke for about 15 minutes, a, a time period that he said if Xi jumped in, he could have solved the problem in problem Hong Kong. Problem solved. Yeah, so. problem solved. But he, he, he's clearly making some linkage between what's going on in Hong Kong and the trade conversations, because if one goes badly south, the other is likely to follow. I don't know that G feels like they need to be linked. I don't know. But I think it doesn't help the president's out there every day. China wants to do a deal. China wants to do a deal. China wants to do a deal. I don't really care. He does. There clearly he does. Every time the market's weak, he says something positive on China. And so it, 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 I think that it should have less and less effect every time he does it. Instead of tweeting about how Jay Powell is the problem. Uh, it's clear that he's negotiating against himself right now because the Chinese don't say a whole heck of a lot other than very pointed statements. And I think it's really important, um, you know, when you think about what is the concessions to be made for Huawei, this is why we are in this trade fight. And there was a great interview on Squawk and Friends this morning with Tom Friedman where he really talked about it. What are we focused on? We're focused on China's um, access to their markets. We're focused on IP theft and forced technology transfer. So if you're going to go and just kind of give up the golden goose, which is really Huawei, this is what the this fights about going forward and letting and, Huawei and, and then have pull access. back on the tariffs, which are the things that actually are the enforcement mechanism of a trade deal. It tells you that we're going nowhere fast. And he's so focused on just the bilateral trade surplus and the idea that the Chinese would buy more ag products. It's really the wrong discussion here. It leads me to believe that if they're going to litigate this by tweet, um, it's not going to go well. It's going to go on until the election year and it doesn't get better from here. Guy, any thought here? Well, yeah, I do have a lot of thoughts. I mean, this started in March of 2018. We're basically in August of 2019. And I've said this for a long time. I'll say it again. I don't think we're any closer to deal today than we were six months ago. We might be further away from a deal, but that's neither here nor there. The Chinese, in their mind, they made a deal decades ago, and that's the deal they're starting trying to adhere to. And to Dan's point, it feels as if we're negotiating against ourselves. Karen says it. Every time the market goes down, you're going to get a tweet. I don't, if you're the a Chinese... that says things are getting better course, between us but and But are things getting better? Do you do? I don't really think uh, things are getting better. I mean, I, 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 I don't so, see it. 
again, the market is his barometer. That's the metric they use as a report card. The market goes down. They're going to try to assuage the fears of the market with whatever tweet they think works that day. But again, the Chinese don't seem to be flinching. They seem unwavering. And I don't really think anything's happening in they, the next few months. They may not be flinching, but you do have to go with some of the numbers that we get. The U.S. numbers that have been put out there have been better. Like the been, industrial production number? Our numbers not generally, better. our numbers have been stronger, right? I mean, that's a fact. Well, Our no, numbers but, generally but look, have been Pete, stronger. You just talked and about the, the economy. Is, the economy under Trump has been averaging about 2.5% GDP. You know what the average has been for the last 10 years? 2.2%. And we didn't have these massive corporate tax cuts. We didn't have deregulation. His trade war is sinking the Trump economy. It's sinking the Trump trade. And how's the Chinese economy doing? Dan? It doesn't matter. No, it's, it it's at 6%. If, and it's a centrally planned economy. If, if you run, were, and, well, you know, the president for life also runs the PBOC. And he, can, he doesn't have to strong arm the uh, Fed chair over right. there. He can just do whatever he wants. I'm he not going to try to talk over you. I'm just going to respond to you. So my response back to you is this. Their economy is in trouble from where it's been. It's at some of the lowest levels, depending on what numbers you want to look at, in 17 years or 20-plus years. And meanwhile, we continue to be moving along. So is it perfect? I'm not saying it's perfect. But I am saying that there is something to be said for the fact that they are suffering far worse right now than we are, in my opinion, from what right, I'm seeing.